Close your eyes and imagine you're hiking up a long and windy road up a very tall mountain in the country of Peru, South America. The sky is cloudy above you, there's a slight drizzle, and the trees and plants around you are dark green and wet from the rain and mist. You've been hiking for a few days, so you're very tired and ready to reach your destination. Use a staff to support yourself, and often stop to drink water for nourishment. You also notice it's become very hard to breathe. That's because you're climbing high in the Andes Mountains, and the air is much thinner up here. You look upward and see your destination is close, the lush peaks of the mountaintop blanketed in the mist. By the end of the day, you reach your destination and first see the ruins of an ancient palace built on the very top of the mountain. You gaze out over the stone walls, terraces, and crumbled buildings, marveling that such a place existed and was once occupied by a king and his royal family. This is the palace they called Old Peak, or Machu Picchu, and you're extremely excited to explore it even further. The first thing you notice are the massive stone walls that seem to blend perfectly with the natural landscape. Once you step inside the walls of the palace, you find yourself in a place that feels both ancient and mysterious. The city is made up of stone buildings and terraces that are carefully arranged in a way that makes you wonder how they were built without modern tools. The buildings have no roofs, which means you can look up and see the drizzly sky above you. Everywhere you turn, there are stunning views. Lush mountains stretch as far as the eye can see, and you see the winding Urubamba River far down below. Next, you spot one of the most fascinating parts of Machu Picchu, the Ituhuanta Stone, which is like a giant sundial. On one of the terraces, you also see a pack of llamas. These adorable animals turn and look at you in a friendly, curious way. Truly visiting Machu Picchu is like entering a real-life fairy tale. It's a place that sparks your imagination and fills you with a sense of awe. The history, the stunning views, and the unique atmosphere have made it a truly unforgettable experience. If you listened to our episode last week, we learned all about the rise of the Inca Empire and the construction of Machu Picchu. Now let's dive into how it was discovered and became the treasured tourist destination that it is today. In 1831, a child named Hiram Bingham III was born to Clara Brewster and Hiram Bingham II in Honolulu, Hawaii. The Binghams were the children of Protestant missionaries who had journeyed to the islands to teach the native people their religion. Growing up, Hiram's parents were very strict. He really struggled with this because his favorite stories were of adventure and troublesome kids like Huckleberry Finn. The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain was one of his favorite books, and he wished for a life of adventure like one of his heroes. He wanted to explore the world, but felt like he was stuck on the island and with parents who wanted him to live a very traditional life and get a very traditional education. When Hiram was 12, he and a friend hatched a plan to leave the island and travel to Africa. He took $250 of his savings out of the bank and headed to the port to set sail to the United States. From there, he had traveled to New York and then Africa. Unfortunately, the boat didn't leave on time, and Hiram's father found out about the plan. As you can imagine, he was not happy. Hiram stayed on Hawaii until he was 16, until he got his chance to leave and study at Yale University, and then later Harvard. He eventually became a professor in Latin American history, and later married and continued to teach. But something inside Hiram still longed for the life of adventure he dreamed of as a child when he read about Huckleberry Finn. In 1908, Hiram Bingham traveled to Peru, South America to meet with other professors for work. There, someone told him the story about a lost Incan city. Hiram was intrigued. He wondered if the story was about the lost city of Vilcabamba. During his trip, he did some exploring and took pictures of ruins and started writing about his time in Peru. He hoped that someday he could return and find this lost, mysterious city from the stories. By 1911, a few years later, Hiram Bingham had assembled a team of experts and enough money to make the return trip to Peru to find the lost city of Vilcabamba. He made great sacrifices such as selling family property in Hawaii, 
to pay the $12,000 for the trip, and to leave his family had a very difficult time. But Hiram was determined to make a great discovery that would put his name in the history books. Hiram and his crew sailed from New York to Lima, Peru, and got to work trying to figure out the location of the lost city. He interviewed people and studied maps and journals of Spanish priests and others who might have clues about the location of the city. From Lima, they traveled to the city of Cusco, where in the last episode we learned about Pachacuti, the great king who once ruled the Inca Empire. In Cusco, Hiram met a man named Melkor Ortega, who said he knew the location of the lost city and could take Hiram and his team there. After a five-day journey through the jungle, Hiram, Melkor, and his team arrived at a village at the base of a mountain. The weather was bad, making the mountain wet and slippery, but Hiram paid Melkor enough to convince him to take him up the mountain. They climbed up through the rain and mists and mud, sometimes on their hands and knees, and soon reached the mountaintop. Ruins were in view. There was something to the stories about this city. They found a family who were living and farming the terraces on the mountaintop. The family gave them some water to drink before Hiram set about exploring the area further. He hiked around and found more walls and more elaborate stone architecture, a temple, a palace, and aqueducts. Hiram didn't know it yet, but this was Machu Picchu, the ruins of Pachacuti's mountaintop palace. He took pictures of the ruins and notes of everything he observed before climbing back down to his awaiting team. But still, Hiram wanted to find the lost city of Vilcabamba, and he continued to explore the area. And he did find a city of ruins overgrowing with vines and plants. Although he didn't realize it at the time, the city was Vilcabamba. But Machu Picchu was even more amazing, and he was very excited to share his discoveries with the world. After returning home, Hiram wrote about his adventures in Peru. He quickly became known around the world for his discoveries and returned again the next year to explore the area deeper and to take more pictures. The team also began to uncover more of the buildings. They dug and found pots and jewelry and golden skeletons, which helped them better understand the life of Pachacuti and the Incas. Many of these artifacts were removed from Machu Picchu, and take him to Bingham's University to be put on display. 100 years later, these artifacts were rightfully returned to Peru for its people to appreciate. After Hiram's later visits, National Geographic printed pictures of Machu Picchu, and people all across the world were able to appreciate the magnificent mountaintop palace. Since that time, Machu Picchu has become one of the most famous archaeological sites in the world. In 1948, Peru built a road leading closer to the ruins, and also made it a national park. This has helped it become one of the most visited locations in the world. Since Hiram's time, more archaeologists and scientists have visited the mountaintop palace to learn about the people who lived there. And currently around 2,000 tourists visit Machu Picchu every day. The story of Machu Picchu is one of skilled, hardworking, and ingenious people who were able to engineer and construct such a magnificent site. Also, it's a story of an intrepid professor, much like one from my favorite movie character, Indiana Jones, who followed his childhood dreams and discovered an ancient city for the world to enjoy. Do you have any kind of ruins near your home? If so, what were the people like who lived there? For example, we have ruins of the Hohokam people who lived near our home long ago in Arizona. It's interesting to wonder what their life was like. How is it similar to yours? How is it very different? If you get the chance, share your thoughts via the link in the show notes. We'd love to hear all about your experiences with archaeological sites near you.